Um, let's actually, uh, we should have talked a little bit more about this version of the Arrhenius equation. So let's talk about this a little bit more. What would happen if we tried to graph this equation? Well, when, when you're graphing equations, or when you're looking at equations, usually there's some things in the equation that you consider as constants or parameters, and other things you consider as variables. So what would be, say, the variables in this equation? Very good, that's not obvious. But what this is telling us is that when we change the temperature, that changes the rate constant. So that those are the variables. Changing the temperature will change the rate constant. That's what we said at the very start. Changing the temperature increases the rate by increasing the rate constant. On the other hand, this is what I would call a constant or a parameter. This is just a physical feature of the reaction. Uh, and the same deal, obviously, R is a constant, the universal gas constant. This is the same R used in PV equals NRT for the universal gas law in the first semester. Uh, and this is a constant for the reaction, which is its activation energy. So when you change the temperature, that doesn't change the activation energy. It just makes it easier to get over the activation energy. In fact, maybe I should have said that. Now we can see why raising the temperature makes the reaction go faster. When you increase the temperature, doesn't that really just basically mean the molecules are jiggling around with more energy? Well, the more energy they're jiggling around with, the more likely they'll collide with enough energy to pass over the activation energy. So those two things are related to each other. Um, okay, so if we were going to make a graph, I guess I'll erase, erase all of this. If I was going to graph this, I would put the variables on the axes. If I was going to graph this equation, what variable would I put on the vertical axis? Ln k. Yeah, ln k. And what variable would I put on the horizontal axis? Yeah, not the temperature, but one over the temperature. And now, how do we interpret this? Um, what would be the y-intercept of this equation? LNA. Yeah, LNA. It's good that you remembered that. And what would be the slope? Minus EA over R. Good, so it looks like you guys are remembering that high school algebra. Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx, did you guys learn that this way? Y equals mx plus b. But x is just the name for the horizontal variable, and y is just the name for the vertical variable. So in this case, our vertical, our horizontal variable, maybe I should put it in parentheses, is 1 over t. And our vertical variable is natural log of k. Um, then the thing that plays the role of b is this ln of a term. And the thing that plays the role of m, or the slope, is negative ea over r. So, um, would the graph look like this? Yeah. It's downward sloping. And it's a straight line, because this is the equation of a line. So here's what we would get if we graphed this. And the slope would be negative EA over R. In fact, that's another way to find the activation energy of a reaction. The other way to find the activation energy is to graph two points on this line and figure out the slope. In fact, if you really um, go back and think about it, that's really what this is. This is really kind of an automated way of figuring out the slope of the line. You would go through the same exact calculations when you do this as you would here. For example, remember the slope is the rise over the run. So you would have to subtract the two ln k's. Well, we subtract the two ln k's to get this. And the run would be subtracting the two reciprocal t's, which we're basically doing over here. So this is just an automated way to figure out the slope of this line. It doesn't require you to graph it and think about the slope every time. Okay, um, so this is something you might see on the test. The instructor wants us to know that uh, the activation energy gives us the slope um, of this line. If he gives you this equation, you should be able to interpret the various parts and see who's the variables and who's the constants or the parameters.